Today I am going to be talking about the four books that are currently on my currently reading. I was going to say my TBR, but like I am reading these. And then at the end, I'm going to clip, I took a few little vlogs from my Jodi Pico meet and greet, which was seriously the best night of my life. If you know me at all, you know she's my favorite author. So I'm going to clip that at the end. And yeah, let's talk about the books that I'm reading. The four books at one time is kind of ambitious. It's a lot, but I started all of these within the last week and I don't know what came over me, but the very first one that I have been working on the longest, which again, for a week, is by any other name. It's by Jodi Picot. And this is actually the one that I went to the book tour book signing event for. So this book is about two women, Melina and Amelia Bassano. Well, Melina is one and Amelia Bassano is the other. Sorry, I'm also really sick. <coughs> well, I'm coming, getting better. But Amelia Bassano, good. my watch is talking to me. I said, sorry, I'm sick. And my watch said, it's all good. But anyway, Amelia Bassano, her story takes place in the 1500s and without giving anything away, she is kind of known to be the secret writer behind Shakespeare. And so you get to see her story. She becomes like a mistress at the age of 13. And you just get to see this historical drama play out. There are so many secrets and you get to see her story of love and how she fell in love with writing and playwriting and all that. And then fast forward, the other point of view is Melina, who is actually her ancestor. She finds out that she is related to Amelia Bassano, and she is, in this modern time, she lives in New York City, and she is also a playwright. And the whole premise of this book is female oppression in this work, I don't want to say, in this industry. And writing plays and telling stories and writing by any other name, by male names or just fake names because of female oppression in the industry. So I'm not very far, I'm maybe 30% done with this one and I was listening to the audiobook, but now that I have the physical copy, I'm gonna start reading the actual book and I just, I can't wait to finish this one. The next one that I started is Fourth Wing. I have had a physical copy for so long and I have been avoiding this book because I had such high hopes for Akatar. And I got pretty deep into Akatar. I read the first three books like back to back to back. And I DNF'd probably halfway through book three. I just like wasn't feeling it. It just wasn't it for me. And I just had high hopes, you know? And so I have been avoiding Fourth Wing, but I'm very excited to jump back into the fantasy realm. So I finally started Fourth Wing. I have a physical copy and I have an ebook that I got from Kindle Unlimited just because like I wanted to read it at night too. I'm only about 15% done and I barely know what it's about, but it is a fantasy book about dragons and dragon riders and there's a school of war and it's following our main character who is a woman or a girl, a young young woman and she is in the school, she is in like the dragon riding trainer half of the school even though that's not what her passion is and it's very interesting so far it's kind of giving like hunger games and harry potter i don't want to say that people are going to come for me but like i said i just started it and honestly i didn't do any background research on the fourth wing world so let's see but i'm liking it so far the third one that i am reading is Missed Connection by Michael Lamo. Actually, I should, I'm gonna clip a little video here. It's an unboxing. He sent me a free copy of this book in exchange for reviews and PR. So shout out to Michael, shout out to Litfluence for hooking me up with this. It is a signed copy, so excited. Pause, now I'm at the drive-thru. I got some super exciting bookish mail today, so let's open it together. I'm so excited. This is Misconnection by Michael Lamo. So pumped for this book. It is an erotic thriller. It is brand new. Michael was so nice and sent me a copy. I believe it's signed. It is. I rarely get physical signed books. I'm very, very excited and grateful for this copy. I can't wait to start it. I have literally been itching to read this book all week. So I am going to start it right this second. 
I got this copy from Michael and Lit Fluence. They are actually still doing giveaways for this book. They're doing 10 giveaways, that's all. I was so excited and lucky to get one of them. So if you want the opportunity to read a digital copy of this book, Lit Fluence is doing signups, I think, until the end of this weekend. So go sign up and, sorry, I'm sick. Go sign up and we can read this together. It's supposed to be super sexy, super spicy, but has a lot of plot twists, twists and turns. I can't wait. Thank you, Michael. I am loving it so far. There are so many twists and turns and honestly, I don't read a lot of male authors, but I'm thoroughly enjoying it. So our main character, he is a, he's in the fashion industry and his hobby is photography. He's married to this woman, she's young and she had their baby young and they got married young and I think she resents him for this. And she's very like mentally and emotionally abusive, very verbally abusive. And he was, oh, someone's calling me. Very abused as a child, now abused by his wife. He is in the fashion industry, but his hobby is photography. Runs into this woman in the park and he takes a picture of her and then goes on this like hunt to find her. It's crazy, there are so many twists and turns and it's spicy and it's thrilling definitely recommend it. I'm so close to being done. I think I'm 70% and I am loving it. It's so good. Book four on my currently reading list is The Perfect Couple by Ellen Hilderbrand. If you know me, I'm not the biggest fan of her, but I just started this book today. Oh, and Miss Connection, I'm obviously reading the physical copy because I got the physical copy. Um, but I started listening to The Perfect Couple by Ellen Hilderbrand this morning. Not the biggest fan of her, but my best friend Hallie Bell and I are doing a podcast episode on this book because it's turning into the Netflix short series literally next week. So stay tuned. We are reading this book now. She, I think this is her second time. She already has read it twice. Um, so she just finished it. She told me to read it. So I was like, okay, fine. Like I'll listen to it. And we're going to cover it hopefully this weekend episode out next week with the Netflix series. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. I'm not, I spilled something on my shirt. I'm not the biggest fan of her, but I'm really enjoying it. I don't know much about the story yet. All I know is that we're mainly seeing, I, li I just started, but we're mainly seeing like the chief of police, obviously it takes place on Nantucket. And there is a big ritzy extravagant wedding happening at this huge like mansion on Nantucket. And there has been a murder. The maid of honor has been murdered. And that's not a spoiler because you find that out like literally page five. So yeah, I'm liking it so far. I'm having a, tr a tough time because I really like all four of these books. And so I'm having a hard time like prioritizing how I read them, but I'm gonna finish listening to, oh, I have to call. I'm gonna finish listening to The Perfect Couple. I'm gonna finish reading Miss Connection because those are the ones I like absolutely have to finish soon. Then by any other name, and then I'm gonna finish Fourth Wing. Fourth Wing is not a priority to me whatsoever. It's just everywhere. Like, I, everyone talks about it, and I needed a new fantasy book. So, there it is. That was my list. That's what I'm currently reading and listening to. I just told Hallie Bell on the podcast last time, I said, I'm all caught up on my books, which is weird. Like, I usually have, like, one that I'm almost done with, but then I've already, like, started listening to another or something like that. And now that was like seriously two days ago. And now I have like four. <laughs> so say lovey. But I am enjoying all of them. I can't wait to let you guys know how I like them. And stay tuned for the podcast episode on The Perfect Couple by Ellen Hildebrand. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching my unboxing video. Shout out again to Michael and Lit Fluids for giving me a copy. And here comes my Jody Pico meet and greet. Bye. Come with me to meet my favorite, and I cannot stress this enough, my favorite author of all time. I am on my way to meet Jodi Picoult. I was forced to read this book, this physical book, in high school. I think I read it when I was 14 or 15. It changed my life. Seriously, it made me a reader. It made me the person I am today, the book a wannabe influencer, the book reviewer, the book lover that I am today, and I am just so freaking honored to be able to meet Jodi Picoult. So I am on my way right now. I'm almost, I'm in Miami but I'm almost there to see her. She's doing a meet and greet and a book signing for her brand new novel. It's called By Any Other Name. This book is a historical fiction that takes place like in the 1500s Shakespeare era and present day. And it's about ancestors, like modern day girl and then her ancestor from the 1500s. And it's a play on Shakespeare and female icons in writing and how there was this woman named Amelia who 
was the real writer of Shakespeare. I can't go too deep into it. I'm only like 20, 30% done with the audiobook, but I pick up the physical book tonight, my signed copy. Uh, I just like, I cannot stress enough how excited and grateful and blessed I am. Like she is seriously my favorite author. And this day I have been, I've had these tickets for months now, literally since the day she announced it, I, I pre-ordered, I did the first thing I could. <sighs> she is my like click immediately by no questions asked author. Anything Jodi Picoult writes, I'm reading and I'm loving. That's it. She is actually the reason I have a part of this tattoo. It's bees and honeycomb. <sighs> so yeah, let's go meet Jodi Picoult, my favorite, favorite, favorite author. I have to go back to my maps now, so. Stay tuned, here we go. I just got here, I am so, so, so excited. This is at a church and I'm very, wearing like a very nipply shirt and I'm starting to feel a little bad. Whoops. Shout out Books and Books for hosting us. How freaking pretty. I love Miami. Obviously it's all fine. It's fine. As women in this country, we are watching our rights being stripped away and we're fighting for them. And I think we're also living in a time where if you're book fan. It's so dark, but I am coming from such a high that I just really wanted to record this right now. <sighs> She's so amazing. Jodi Bigot is the most amazing author in the world. If you have not read any of her books, I recommend you start today. Her co-host was Brad Meltzer. I did purchase this book because, you know, support. And he was there and he wrote for Michelle, Make Magic. And then he said, that'll make sense when you read the book. So I'm excited, I can't wait. Um, I did tell her that my tattoo was halfway inspired by one of her books. And I held up the line, so I'm sorry to everybody else, but she took a picture of us on her personal cell phone. How cool. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. Like, I hope she like posted it, because I'd love to, I'd love to have that photo. Um, but yeah, if you haven't been to a book signing, I highly recommend it. It was such an incredible experience listening to her talk about historical fiction and female oppression and politics and Taylor Swift, like we literally, she talked, we, as if I was talking to her, she talked about everything. She is the nicest human in the entire world. I am just so blessed that I got to do this.